It's the summer, and that means summer movies for me. All me. Just, just for me. And we're kicking it off with none other than Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. I remember when the first trailer for the first film came out. There was a bit of a mixed response with it. But since then, Guardians isn't just a hit. It's one of Marvel's most popular properties, with use of classic music, 80s references, and a huge amount of heart and comedy. But now we're here with Guardians 2, and it's one hell of a sequel. With more classic rock, more 80s references, and even more heart and comedy, this film tracks new ground while also maintaining the charm of the first one on steroids. First off, this film is way funnier. I clocked in at about three jokes per minute at one point. And a large amount of that humor is coming from Dave Bautista, who has really come into his own as a character actor. You know the deal, it's a balance of crude, juvenile, and sometimes lighthearted humor. But man, do they throw it all at you. This film is filled to the brim with jokes. It is probably one of the funniest films to come out of Marvel in a while. But it's not even just the humor, the story itself is extremely well done. It's modeled heavily on Empire Strikes Back, with split up teams, the father revelation, uh, and deep space magic training. But as you watch it, you get this idea that it's more deliberately done as a homage rather than as a ripoff. All the characters are here again, and they all have really well story arcs. Some are more utilized heavier than others. Definitely Peter Quill and Rocket have arcs of their own. Um, Gamora and Drex kind of get put on the wayside slightly. But really, the cream of the crop as far as story goes in this film is going to be Yondu. You're going to find more sympathy for this character than you ever expected in the first one. It's definitely worth a look. And after watching these films back to back, I have to say that I love the atmosphere of these films. All the planets, all the sets, the way the, the cultures are, they all are just so cool and unique to each other. I mean, from from the Nova Corps in the, in the first one, to the giant floating head in the first one, to the collector in the, the that stuff is great, and it just, it, it's expanded on in this next one. We have these sovereigns who are these golden Roman types of of rich aliens and they they pride themselves on how they appear and they don't they don't go out and fight on their own they actually have video game style spaceships that do it for them and then there's this brothel planet which we briefly see but it's got this very unique culture to it and these very interesting looking aliens and you really like the way these characters interact it's so much ca it's so casual I mean I love it and then there's this concept of a living planet, like a planet with a soul that I've never seen before in a film. It's just, it's fascinating that they come up with this stuff. And I know a lot of this comes from Marvel, but to see it implemented in the way it's designed in these films, it's such a unique look. And I'd have to say that it may very well be better than Star Wars in that aspect. And I'm just gonna say it, the cherry on the top is Baby Groot. If you love anything remotely cute, you're gonna love Baby Groot. But alas, there are problems with this film. For one thing, there's way too many jokes. They throw a lot of jokes at you in this film, and because they throw so many, a lot of them do fall flat. While there's stuff that is definitely good, there are a couple of times that I found myself rolling my eyes, and that's kind of a problem with this film. In large, Disney saw what worked and amped up everything to 11. There are moments where characters come off as over-exaggerated versions of themselves, rather than the complex ones we got in the first one. They, they seem like they're mugging for the camera, or they're referencing or the parodying what the characters were in the first one and that it does become a little alienating after a while not to say that they don't do good performances but it doesn't feel as they don't feel as traumatized as they did in the first one also this film is long there were definitely moments in this film that could have been cut or just scaled down a little bit it didn't have to be as long as it was this isn't Lord of the Rings we don't need that kind of definition we can get a short piece of fun in cinema but with the flaws it has, this was still a big, fun way to start the summer. And that's what we need right now. With all the negativity in the world, with all the crap going on, the one thing we need more than ever right now is something light and something that's just full of heart and something that's just a big old adventure for us to sit back and enjoy. And that's what Guardians gives us. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. I liked it, and I know you will too.